red blood cell production. On this page, we're looking just a little bit more closely at the process of erythropoiesis regarding hormonal influences. So on the previous page, we looked at uh, how stem cells make red blood cells. And then imagine if this is bone marrow. From that bone marrow, the production of red blood cells. And that whole process is called erythropoiesis and it lasts about two weeks. Okay, now let's think about what might stimulate that. Really, the monitoring of your blood volume comes from your kidneys. That's the, one of the jobs of your kidneys. And the kidney has a blood supply coming into it. So it monitors both blood volume, which is simply just how much blood you have, and even the oxygen quant uh, quality and quantity of that blood. And then as necessary, it will release a, a hormone known as erythropoietin. or EPO. And then EPO stimulates the bone marrow. So again, after surgery, after giving blood, after hemorrhage, the kidney can sense the low blood volume and oxygen content of the blood and send a, send a hormone called erythropoietin through the blood to the bone marrow to stimulate um, makeup production of red blood cells. There are a few hormones that give the kidney a little more EPO oomph. One of those um, is thyroxine. Since thyroxine's job is to increase uh, the ATP production of cells, that means that cells need more oxygen to make more ATP. And if cells need more oxygen to make more ATP, they need more red blood cells coming their way. So thyroxine stimulates the release of EPO from the kidney. And interestingly, men are always going to, well, in general, will have more thyroxine than female because testosterone stimulates thyroxine. So men have more red blood cells in their blood than women because testosterone stimulates thyroxine, which stimulates EPO. And then another um, impetus for the secretion of EPO will be a drop in blood volume. And and or a drop in the oxygen in oops oxygen in the blood. Blood doping is when someone purposely so a purposeful drawing of blood two weeks before an event and then the night before 
Well, so the blood replenishes, right, in those two weeks? And then shortly before the event, that blood is given back. Bas basically, the person has been doped up with their own blood. What do you think would be some of the advantages? Well, they're going to have greater oxygen carrying capacity in their blood, and so they might have more stamina. This, of course, has been a huge deal with Lance Armstrong having to give back all of his trophies because he was doing blood doping all throughout his athletic career. Blood doping is also dangerous because the increased hematocrit increases the risk of stroke. Our hematocrit should only be a certain um, number high, a certain percentage, or it actually makes our blood sludgy and more likely to cause a stroke.